One of our big engineering challenges is that a fusion reactor will hold a plasma as hot as a star, less than a metre away from magnets, just a few degrees above absolute zero. The kind of temperatures that occur in a fusion reactor are, are actually hotter than the temperatures in a star. But in such close proximity to things that are near absolute zero. Well, the plasma has to be really hot to, to get the maximum fusion rate out of it. And so that's about 100 million degrees. And then again, the magnets, to optimize their operations, have to be really cold, around 20 degrees Kelvin. The magnets have to be cold because they are only superconducting at very low temperatures. And even if they would, they would be superconducting at higher temperatures, we'd still like to operate them at around 20 Kelvin to optimize their performance. Demonstration tokamaks like ST40 can be made of copper. They can get pretty high levels of magnetic field, but only for a couple of seconds at most because the conductors, which are just copper, they're resistive, so that when you put current through them, they heat up. So after a while you have to shut them down. And a superconductor has essentially no resistance, so you can run current through it continuously. And the reason that you need high temperature superconductors is that they'll carry on carrying significant amounts of current into extremely high magnetic fields. So we get up to over 20 tesla field on magnet, and we can do that at 20 or 30 degrees above absolute zero. You just could not do that without a high temperature superconducting magnet. So here are the three different uh, temperature scales and you can see that uh, Kelvin is, a, is an absolute temperature scale because it starts from zero at the, at the absolute zero. Kelvin is practical because it has the same magnitude as, as Celsius. So one Kelvin is the same as one degree Celsius when the temperature changes. And the absolute zero point is minus 273.15 Celsius. How do you achieve that massive difference? You've got 100 million degrees and then a few centimetres later a few degrees, 20 degrees. There you see our plasma. The centre part is the really hot part of the plasma and then it, it cools down towards the edge which is plotted there with the, with the orange line and that confines the, the temperature inside, inside the plasma. Magnetic field is, is a good, good first shield between the hot plasma and, and the cold magnets. So confining the hot plasma and not letting it, it touch anything shields already the, the first wall components from, from the temperatures that we have inside the core plasma. So we have the 100 million degrees in the, in the very core, we have a gradient already inside the plasma, and then the walls can be as low as a couple of hundred degrees, or in SD40 even lower than that. And then the magnets outside have to be even colder, and usually a vacuum is a good, good insulator, so we, we, if you have vacuum in between the, the, the vessel walls and the magnets, that will help us keep the magnets cold, even if the, the vessel is a couple of hundred degrees. In the next upgrade of, of ST40, we'll have more coils around the plasma to control it and keep it further away from the walls. So even if the temperature in the, in the core goes up, we're hoping that we can confine the plasma better than we did before. So with a series of layers and good engineering design and use of vacuum, you can achieve an enormous temperature gradient in only a few centimetres.